Hey everyone, welcome to this video where we are celebrating our 15 year anniversary. So join us while we speak to some of our important regular guests that have been supporting us for almost all the 15 years. And let's have a little tour of the new roastery and talk a little bit about our history and what has changed over the past 15 years. So what are some of the changes where that has happened over the f past 15 years? Yeah. Some of the changes have been, uh, well, the most obvious one is that we moved the roastery from our cafe to, to a different location because we needed more space. And obviously we bought a bigger roaster so we can roast more coffee. We now have a cold sorter and so on. And of course, in the cafe now, we have more seats. We used to have, in the beginning, we had only one seat, and that was reserved for my grandfather. And then we expanded to three seats, and now I think we have close to 20 seats. And also, of course, we started as a small team. So in the beginning, we were, I think, five people working, five or six, and now we are 18. <laughs> so that's a pretty obvious change over the years. Who are Team Wendelbow? Well, we have a lot of Wendel uh, bows that has been working here. Uh, over the years. Uh, in the beginning we had a very small team, Tim Varney, Ola Brattos, they still kind of work in coffee uh, and they kind of affected the, the coffee shop a lot and then Stephanie who has been in our bar for I think 11 years now. We have Marit who is in the roastery here, she's the team leader here and uh, she's also very kind of well trained and uh, do things you know after protocol all the time and uh, so I would say like every person that has worked there has had a big influence on how we work, uh, positively. And uh, we haven't had that many team members over the past 15 years. I think we maybe have had 30 to 40 people maximum. Uh, and because we have open every day, there's a lot of people we need, but uh, uh, most people have stayed there for a long time. So we haven't had a lot of turnover of people. So definitely the key to success for our espresso bar has been the people who work there. Uh, I've been traveling a lot during the past 15 years to coffee farms and because I'm the coffee buyer in this company. So uh, I wouldn't be able to make uh, such a successful business and especially the espresso bar without the staff who work there. And I would have to pull out Stephanie who has been the bar manager for 11 years. And she's in charge of all the training of our staff and uh, how we do service. And of course we, we talk together and agree on how we should do things and everything so that it kind of represent my my taste and my flavor but uh, she's the one in charge of the espresso bar and she's doing a fantastic job so I think uh, much thanks to her that's why a lot of uh, our guests are regulars they come in almost every day and they buy coffee and they love to talk to Stephanie. So my name is Stephanie Don Hall. I'm the daily bar manager of this espresso bar and I started to work here in 2010 so 11 and a half years I've been working here. So the biggest change I've seen during my time here is uh, probably that this place has turned into a cafe with multiple seatings because before we had the roastery here where I'm sitting we had the roaster we had only three chairs so that's the biggest change. But also, we've had a lot more foreign guests coming in to visit us. And many of them are uh, coming to Oslo to visit us. So I'm very humble about that. Yeah. Well, for me, uh, we've had a lot of uh, regular guests who have been there from almost day one. And of course, we, we gain some more regulars and we lose some. Some people move. Some people, after they move, they come back after a year and they, uh, they enjoy drinking our coffee. And I think it's, for me, it's a sense of responsibility that we take everyone seriously and we don't want to have serve them bad coffee ever. And that goes for our regular guests, but also the new guests. So for me, it's, uh, to be consistent is extremely important because we value very highly our regular guests. They are the ones who put bread and butter on our table. So uh, for us, it's kind of a big responsibility to make sure that we deliver the quality that they ex are expecting every day. 
We also have uh, some of our regulars, like Anders Valde, who has been there from the very first day. He's actually also the world Aeropress champion, the first one. We had the first championship in our espresso bar. But uh, he's one of the customers who actually also has the guts to tell us when something is not right. Uh, he's actually also worked with us for a, a short while, but um, uh, that's one of the beauties of having a regular guest is that they also have opinions and uh, they have the confidence to tell us if something is not quite right or they can complain about the coffee if we didn't nail it that day. And, but uh, of course, the best part of it is that we're kind of uh, slightly friends and uh, we can enjoy you know, also being together outside of the coffee shop sometimes. My name is Anders uh, and I came here uh, the day it opened actually. I was here on the first day. I guess my favorite thing about this espresso bar is the consistency, the quality and the nice people that work here. I would say that's the best. The, the, the thing that has changed the most is the quality of the, of the beans, I would say. Like I remember uh, we, they had a tasting, I think Tim did a tasting where he, he uh, it was, I think it was on the 10 year anniversary, he did a thing where he did, um, he made, he roasted the coffee the way he roasted it 10 years ago. So you could taste how, uh, like a 10 year old roast profile and then a new one. And the difference was massive. My name is Heidi and I started going to Tim's Bar around 2007, 2008, uh, six months after they opened. Uh, one of the first memories uh, I have is the first time I tasted uh, a coffee called the uh, Geisha. It was a totally new experience. It was like tasting champagne in a coffee format. That was lovely. And then they had kind of a small tasting here on the bar and it was really nice. I think my favorite thing about the espresso bar is that they are true to the concept. It's only coffee, no food. It makes it uh, different. My name is Peke de Saint. Uh, I think I started to come here in uh, 2012. So I've been a regular for 10 years. So my favorite thing about the espresso bar is for sure the quality of the coffee. Uh, and uh, everything else is also great, like the service and the professionality, but uh, yeah, the quality of the coffee, it's, it's the best I've tasted ever. My stand-up memory, when it comes to coffee, I would say uh, I remember a Kenyan coffee, uh, Kapsukisio, uh, which was very, very good. I would say around 2015, maybe. Uh, I still, that's like still my benchmark coffee. My name is Joachim, and I think it was in February. So I first started to come in February 2009. Okay, the thing yeah. that the, sa the same thing is the first day I came would be that there's always nice stuff inside here. You always they always greet you when you come inside. My my biggest memory would be in 2017, 5th of November 2017, because then I was served the espresso nano chala, which was meant for uh, Noma in Copenhagen. But Steph served me two shots of Nano Shala and I will always remember that. A lot has changed in the last 15 years in regards of how we buy coffee. And in the beginning, of course, we were a small company, so we had to buy coffee. Uh, we actually bought green coffee from Solberg & Hansen. Uh, there weren't that many coffee importers around. But then I quickly understood that our quality wasn't going to become better. Uh, if we didn't improve the green coffee that we bought. So I started traveling and I met some beautiful farmers that we're still working with. Uh, we have been working with them since 2009, 2010. And, um, so over the years we have kind of developed together a protocol that we follow on the farm. So we have looked at how they grow the coffee, how they uh, process the coffee, how they dry the coffee, how they store the coffee, how they ship the coffee and I kind of try to improve all these steps in order to get higher quality and more consistent quality and more of the quality that we want to taste. So I would say that uh, from being not involved at all with farmers and not being able to communicate with them, uh, today we are communicating you know, on a regular basis with WhatsApp and I speak a little bit of Spanish now and some of them speak more English, so it's much easier to communicate. Hey everyone, uh, so I'm back at my farm here in Colombia, Finca El Suelo. What role has my coffee farm played in the development of the company? Well, I would say that 
after I bought a coffee farm, uh, I had to spend a lot more time at Origin. Not just on the nice days, like normally when you buy coffee, you go to the farm, you spend a few days with the farmer, you eat lunch, dinner, you look at the farm and that's it. But after I bought my own farm, I had to actually stay on the Elias' farm, which is my neighbor, for you know three, four weeks in a row and every day. So I would see the, you know, the small details that goes on every single day in different periods of the year. And that has really opened my mind to understanding that coffee is actually really hard work and we have to value the coffee a lot more than we do and also pay the producers a good price so that they can afford to invest in their farms and also their workers. So it's kind of a, made me more stubborn in terms of making sure that we pay a good price for our coffee. Finally, we are producing some coffee and I hope in the next one or two years the area behind me here, which is full of wood chips, will be producing as well. Uh, transparency for me has always been really important, not just because I need to know where the coffee comes from. Uh, it gives me more pleasure to drink the coffee when I know where it's from and who has produced it, but also to trace back the money and making sure that the producers we buy from get the money that we are paying so that they can invest in their farms and also understanding how much of that money that we're paying that they get and also who who are the other people who gets the money because we we do need to work with importers sometimes exporters and they also need to make uh, money on on their business so uh, for me it's always been uh, important to talk about transparency not just because of this but also to explain to people that quality coffee doesn't happen by itself you know it's a really a lot more work to produce consistent high quality and you have to pay more for it and that's why our coffee is sometimes regarded as more expensive, although I don't think it's expensive at all. Um, uh, and we, that's why we have to explain to people, you know, it costs a little bit more because th there's a lot more work behind it. And uh, without transparency, it's impossible to tell that story. So our role style has really changed over the last 15 years. Uh, I remember when we opened the company, we, I had basically just had experience with roasting espresso. And back then, I remember our profiles were, for espresso were like 20 minutes long and we roasted the coffee to second crack. And it was still considered to be quite light back then. Uh, today, of course, our espresso, we are still listening to first crack of the beans when we're taking the coffee out. And it's much, much, much lighter. And um, also our filter coffees in the beginning was quite dark. And then we had an, uh, an exporter from Ethiopia who came with some very beautiful light roasted coffee. And that really opened my mind to how far we could actually push the coffee in order to get most out of it. So I just love the fruitiness and floral flavors that you got from these light roast coffees and that's how we kind of started developing that. Now we've had a lot of different persons roasting coffee for our company over the years. And I used to roast coffee myself in the beginning, but today I don't do it. Today I'm kind of the head of quality control. So I taste all the coffees and make sure that the profiles are where they should be in, according to my taste. But over the years, we've had people like Tim Varney, Ola Brattos, we've had Mons Akna Andersson, we have Marit, we have Ben. Everyone has been roasting coffee. And what Marit, especially now, you know, the team leader in our roaster is very good at, is to teach other roasters how to follow our protocol so that they can replicate what we want. So today we have uh, three different people who can roast coffee. Just because if one gets sick, we are very depending on one person, so we need to have other people who can do it. And the goal for us is that it doesn't matter who roasts the coffee, the, the results should be very, very consistent. And that's why we are very strict on, in our protocol. My name is Marit Isla. I'm the team leader of the roastery and I have worked here for seven years. So my favorite thing about working in the roastery is to roast. I think it's fun to um, manage a lot of tasks at the same time. Um, you have to oversee the roast curve, make sure you follow the recipe. And it's a very good feeling when you hit that. And you know it's gonna be a great tasting coffee. So we used to roast inside the coffee shop during opening time. That was quite stressful. <laughs> we had customers that were really curious about what we were doing. And that's, that's great, but it's kind of hard to concentrate It's a lot of fun when you have a busy day or a busy week and um, you got to do the job uh, exactly how you wanted to. 
exactly as planned and we can just give each other a high, high five and we, we did a great job today. Then that's such a good feeling. <laughs> so I started as a barista and I really wanted to learn how to roast. So after two years of working in the bar, uh, there was a position for roasting that opened up and I asked him if I could have that. And he said yes, and I'm so, so grateful that he gave me the opportunity. It was a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> so Tim and Ben that trained me has been very patient with me. And I'm happy that I didn't give up. The key to our success as a roastery has definitely been three things, I think. First of all, uh, the quality of the green coffee that we buy is very high. We don't really try to buy anything else than the best coffees we can get. But also because we have been working with the same producers over many years, we have managed to develop quality protocols that makes that coffee very consistent. So even if they have a slightly off year because of climate or something, the, the quality they produce is still very, very good and the coffees are always very, very sweet and clean. Um, we've been consistent because it's my taste, so I'm the coffee buyer, so I buy what I like, I don't buy what I don't like. So uh, consistency is something that our customers value a lot and uh, talk about a lot. Uh, and that's one of the things that we're recognized for. And the third thing is uh, probably our light roast style that we kind of developed over the years uh, that we're known for. But I mean, we didn't invent light roasting. There's a lot of roasteries in the past that has done that before us. But that's one of the things that kind of put us on the map in the coffee world and that we are very famous for today, I think. What advice would I give to myself 15 years ago? Well, definitely to trust my gut feeling. Uh, I have always regretted things that I've done where I didn't trust my gut feeling. So trust my inner instinct and uh, follow. Uh, you know, um, I have a very clear vision of where I want to take my company or where, who we are. And uh, to stay true to that uh, plan and that idea it has been uh, the most important. Uh, and I wish I kind of was a little bit more true to that in the beginning, so we were a little bit more focused. But you know, you learn from all your mistakes and everything, so I don't really regret anything. So the plan for the next uh, five to 15 years, obviously we're gonna continue running the company as good as we can. Still focus on roasting high quality coffees. Our plan has never been to be the biggest roastery in the world. We want to be known for having very, very high quality coffees. I want to increase the amount of coffees that I buy from the producers we're already buying from because uh, there's more space in our containers and they can produce more good coffee. And also, of course, I want to be able to produce sweet, sweet, beautiful coffees on my own farm without using any mineral fertilizer and pesticides and to be able to teach that uh, to other farmers so that they can follow suits.